And we're live on the Touchdowns and Tangents radio show, coming live to you from the Good News radio station in Los Angeles, California. Across the, across the way from me is my friend and sort of enemy at the moment, Kenneth. How you doing, man? Kenneth Frank James Barry. Fuck you very much. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm doing good, but not seriously. Go screw yourself. Yeah, man. So negative vibes all around, but it's all good because it's Thursday and tomorrow's Friday. So I work tomorrow. That, what, how does that help? So <laughs> we we thank you for joining us on the Good News Radio Station app and website. And if you're listening to this in the podcast space, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, you know wherever you get your podcast from, we hope that we make wherever you're at your environment. The bus, your car, you know, just kicking it at the barbershop. In we line hope we on make it a little break. better. You know, a little bit better. That's the whole goal. Because we're at the cusp of greatness here, and we thank everyone for coming along for the ride. Thank you for not making this like an, an The Edge of Glory Lady Gaga line, because I would have killed you for it. <laughs> I would have really killed you All for right, it. Kenny. So since we haven't done it in a while, why don't you go ahead and tell people what this broadcast slash podcast is like. This apparatus of sound and entertainment is like uh, when you're at work and thankfully it goes by really quick and the whole time you're cussing somebody out in traffic or you're passive aggressively trying not to punch the person next to you while you're waiting on the bus. You just have that one thing that you just hone in on that makes you smile inside for a couple seconds, even though on the outside it looks like you want to murder somebody, but you just hold on to that. And then lasts you until you get home and you start your day all over again. And yeah, that's kind of like what we are. Yeah, man. So what did you say at first? The This apparatus of sound, of sound and, and entertainment. entertainment. Yes. All right. I, I, I can rock with that. But yeah, so. The sound and the fury. So yeah, on this week's. And touch, journalistic integrity. Touchdowns and tangents show. We got um, hopefully a couple of special guests. Um, for sure one, maybe two. The phone number is 323-900-0478. Call in, have a take, and if you suck, today I'm going to roast you. Yeah, man, because as I said before, negative vibes are all around, and it's largely because we're both pretty hangry. We didn't get a chance to eat before the show as we normally do. That goddamn pastrami sandwich place down the street that's apparently really famous only takes cash. Like honestly, I'm surprised I was even allowed and we're to not the even lunch gonna, counter. And we're not even gonna plug the name until you know no. we, we taste that delicious sucking. I don't even like pastrami. pastrami. Pause. Paul wow. You wanna tell us you wanna tell us something, Pete? No, nah, man. Why, man, why? No one, pastrami you is tell, not that delicious. You wanna, you wanna pastrami no, is not it is that for me. I love pastrami and some pickles, homemade pickles. Uh, okay, you're tripping. Okay, homemade pickles. You're tripping, yes. bro. Homemade pickles. First yes. off, second off. Pickle Grow juice. up. Pickle it's juice? 2018. What about pickle juice? It's 2018. Are you on the Jay Hayahi train? No, do you like... All right, so so let's get straight into the so content, gonna answer man. answer my question. Pickle juice is healthy for you. Yeah, of course. I'll drink it. You know, my I, sister, I need it to my sister, balance my sister out my stomach. You need God to balance out your stomach, and he don't want to park that Red Sea. Yeah, man. So we thank you for joining us on our broadcast slash podcast. Hopefully, you'll learn a little bit. You'll act a little bit better, and you might laugh and learn about football. And hopefully this X is a conduit to expel some of the pettiness out of your day so you don't kill somebody. Because all that pent-up rage and frustration is not healthy. So, and he's looking dead at me. Yep. Okay, KB, so. Only we had, never mind, I'm not going to say it, I'll wait. So, let's start with the topic of the day, since it kind of broke today. Um, Ruben Foster. Oh, shit. Yeah, man. So pretty much. Is it too late for a gun? Gun blast? If that's what you want. I live to serve. I mean. I think it's more appropriate to have. Light. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, so pretty much. It's a dark cloud. Ruben Foster. The report came out. Um. A development in his case, he was arrested a couple months ago for domestic violence charges. Turns out that he allegedly punched the female eight to ten times. His uh, girlfriend, allegedly. And eight dragged 11, her on the floor. Uh, yeah. And he's facing a gang of felony charges. He was previously facing gun charges, but I think those were like 
Mine kind of brushed out the way, but. And so. he's facing up to 11 years in prison because yeah. it's felonies. So. Ray Car- not quite Ray Carruth, but really bad. Yeah, nobody's quite Ray Carruth. There's a couple athletes. I'm not going to say LJ, but, you know. But I think the biggest thing and what, what Twitter's really reacted to is the fact that. He's still on the Niners. Yeah, exactly. Which is really weird. But they even released a statement saying basically we'll let the legal process play itself out and see where things go. Hashtag Randy Gregory. Hashtag now Randy Gregory was just a weed head who wasn't who should have stayed in school or nothing. No, year. remember he had the domestic violence thing too. Where Damn, I thought that was after he got cut though, because he it, didn't really. No, I think that was what got him cut, oh. and then he got the charges dismissed, and then he tried to come back. I don't even remember his comeback. I just but, know he kept getting but the whole for thing, weed. The whole thing why he got the charges dismissed is the victim just pulled out. So Poor choice of words. Yeah, I thought about it as soon as I said it. Recanted is the legal definition and what they should teach in journalism class. So that's probably what Foster's victim will do because these sort of high-profile cases... Like, nah, you facing for the that victim? many charges? Bro, you know 49ers fans. It you happened know, in Alabama, too, ads? right? Did it happen in Alabama? Because if it happened in Alabama compared to California, that's two different states. Yeah, and I don't know. In Alabama, they kind of sure. have a different kind of justice, if you get what I mean. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure it's probably Alabama, because that's where all Alabama linebackers get in trouble in the offseason for some reason. The point is, I'm talking about rich, you, rich men find, find a way to get off. Especially athletes. Eh, but he's a black male in America. Don't forget that. And, and it's domestic violence charge. Okay, but and we, he's an Alabama linebacker. As I just, as I just said before. There's a lot of red As flags. I just said before, Randy Gregory got off. We've seen plenty of. Bro, but that's different. He of, wasn't accused of trying to kill his girlfriend. We've seen a lot of athletes get out of domestic violence charges. Yes, but in this case, he already had, he already had strikes against him. He had strikes in college against him. That's true. His temper. It's true. Like, that's what I'm saying. With this dude in particular, Ruben Foster, it's over for you in more ways than one. So it's deeper than just, oh, it's a domestic violence charge. It might get dismissed or it might get put down. It's like, nah. They really want to keep him because they know he's going to be great. But also, it's like the same thing that makes you great is the same thing that can destroy you in, in the end, which is kind of sad. I just hope there's some clarity here and whatever happens, legal system's going to have to take its course. But hopefully he changes his life and gets it together, whether he plays football ever again or not. I think, well, actually he's not on the um, commissioner's roster? list yet. He's actually not suspended yet. He's not eligible for suspension yet. Yeah, but, so. I mean, but look, one, it's one Goodell. Point, What's going to happen? One point I did want to bring up is, so the 49ers have already kind of recently been down this path, and though it's completely different context, the fact is you had – a linebacker who had red flags, who got in trouble, and is consistently getting in trouble. Now it's different incidents, but what the par- Alton Smith exactly thousand dollars exactly. So what I'm trying to connect is the 49ers, although they're trying to do right by standing by the legal process, are they really just enabling him to where he's not going to get the help that he needs immediately and just Drawing it out is basically what I'm saying. Here's where I split hairs here, and it's where it's a different comparison. He was an all pro his first couple of years. He yeah. was already great, and then the problems started happening. On top of that, he had Justin Smith. He had a veteran presence. He was the young one of the youngest dudes on that defense. Yeah. This is a young team altogether. Yep. And you're starting over, and you have this kid who's a loose cannon. I mean, I don't think it's – in some cases you might I have an LT I'm, rule. I guess what I'm trying to say is – the 49ers didn't learn anything from all of no, regardless it's, of it's how, how you split it's, hairs. It's two different situations because one I, has I a, alcohol, a substance abuse problem and the other has like a violence problem and just an issue of well, what I'm handling saying is, business. So the substance abuse turned into domestic violence, which is the most recent thing that got, Alden got in trouble for. He went from hurting himself to hurting other people. Exactly. and Whereas Foster's just hurting other people. At the moment. But who knows what it'll turn into four or five years down the line. But that's what I'm saying. Because when he you have that re- sort of temper, it's you're variable. Yeah. And the issue is he could probably overcome that anger and rehabilitate his life. He may just never play football again. 
but he was never on the level of an Alden Smith. And that's where it kind of defers. They put up with his talent, and they also, let's be honest, if he wasn't playing next to Justin Smith, he probably would have got exposed earlier. And I guess Because he I- was eating, he had, like, Smith was not just there on the field as a veteran presence and building block for that defense, but he had Harbaugh as the head coach. And that's totally different than Kyle Shanahan. No and disrespect I, to Kyle Shanahan. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, can you really get your life together when you're still playing football? Especially when it's a temper thing where football is a game of... And you go too far? Exactly. When some you don't know come, how to turn it on and off. Some because people some people back. can. Some, some people, people can. can. It works. Some people change their lives around. But in this case, I don't know, man. And he's lucky he's in San Francisco, which is a pretty liberal city. So they're willing to give someone a second chance. The but ne- if it's anywhere else, I don't know, man. The next thing I want to talk about, um, real topical, is, and it's something we've kind of been following around. For whatever reason, Philly just keeps coming up in our podcast. And I think I mentioned Harold's cheesesteak somewhere, somewhere in the archives. So with, with that said, Meek Mill... You want to go ahead and give the synopsis on this since you're probably more read up on it than I am? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Meek Mill might be getting out of jail next week. Early as Monday, according to reports. Um, there's obviously been a lot of things that happened with his case. The judge was corrupt. Yada, yada, blase, blase. That was already known. It's just it took forever to come to light publicly. And if you really look at the fact that they're giving up, they gave him... He was on parole, what, for past almost the past 15 years? Something he did when he was, like, in his teens, like 18, 19, somewhere around that time. He's been on probation for a long time. And not everybody can be clean for that amount of time, even if you're not on probation. So the fact that he got pretty much thrown back in jail for a wheelie and – just there's a lot of things that happen with that case, but the big the big issue is New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft, and I think somebody else I forget who else I think it, I want to say it was a prosecutor or some someone within the field might have been the mayor it was somebody either like somebody, in politics yeah. or justice it was a local and locally um they went to visit him in jail wait the punchline's coming it gets better he said uh. I quote, pretty much, Meek Mill's a good guy, looking at his case and everything, he really doesn't deserve to be in jail. Now, maybe it's the the, the culture-shattering, world-crushing ass-whooping that he got in the Super Bowl, or maybe it's that he really looked at the Philly Duff Eagles roster from top to bottom and looked at the fact that not only were they great, and they had a lot of social activism going on, and they are really progressive. Or maybe, I don't know, he's trying to really distance himself even further from, from the fact that he's allied or with Or maybe Trump. he's just being a culture vulture. No, 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 no. You didn't and let me right finish. Height. Or maybe he really has time to care about what's going on in Philly, and since most of his players what? are black, and they prob- somebody probably pitched it to him, for whatever reason, he's involved with this Meek Mill case. And I don't. I hope it doesn't turn into a situation where, like, um, Trump comes in and pretends I, like the Lonzo Ball situation where he's like, I helped him get out of jail. I'm and just, I'm just Lonzo's confused. dad's like, no, you didn't. I'm just confused because I mean, you're usually the first the person to call people out for, you know, trying to champion things that they really weren't a part of and riding waves late. So Oh, no, he's definitely riding the wave. I'm he's, just, I'm it's just some, confused. It's something fishy going on. I'm just not going to jump into what it might be, but I laid out what it could possibly be. And maybe he had a revelation from that ass whooping that Philly put on. <laughs> when he realized, oh, wait, this, this win galvanized the city and NFL players more than ever are more comfortable – with how progressive they are in the lives they lead. Like, Chris Long stays killing people on Twitter. Like, that's one of my favorite people. He's dope. Now, his brother, apparently, from certain reports or whatever, people saying, 